evening class. Please take a moment to silence all cell phones and electronic devices. Thank you. My name is Janet Franklin. I'll be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was founded as a result of the divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were reincorporated in the state of California in 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. This Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the president of the Tampa branch, Dr. Cynthia Smith, and our vice president, Dr. Judith Turner. In the school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew script. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, the Greek, nor the Latin languages had any characters or letters in the alphabet that would produce the sound, which is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English alphabet until some 1,400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, oh my goodness. Therefore, I think I said it before. I, therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true, correct, and original name and title for our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a fiery cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular nor descriptive shape and form. We've drawn this cloud all along the edges of this chart to show you that everything in the chart, on the chart is in the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. Now this is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. 
Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we must all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface to the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In the school, we have 10 primary constitutional objectives and aims, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua, the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate so-called unknown spirit law, so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operations of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning, ordained there is no other name given among men where man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit the kingdom, eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. <coughs> We will have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Lawrence Edwards, followed by a musical selection. Yes. The choir? Me and Judith. Okay. Elisa Zizi and Judith Turner. Our scripture reading lesson tonight is 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. And our scripture readers are Dr. Le Dr. Jennifer Marshall and Dr. Carol Miller. Dr. Carol Miller will be the scripture reader for tonight. I'm coming, Lawrence. Proceeding. Good evening. I bow our hearts and our minds, give thanks to our Heavenly Father Yahweh for allowing us to come together once again 
Let's all keep our eyes on that prize. You know that it's, it's time, the end time is coming. It won't be long before we all have to get out of here. So we, let's keep our eyes on our, and think about what we have to do and what he's given us to do. Because we have a long way to go and a short time to get there. But those few words, say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll be reading 1 Corinthians uh, 6 chapter from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Resource Association. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 6. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more are the things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, do you set them to judge who are least esteemed? In the assembly, I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren, but brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren." Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor self-abusers, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. And such were some of you. But now ye are washed, but now you are sanctified, but now you are justified in the name of the Savior, Yahshua, and by the Spirit of our Elohim. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Food for the belly and the belly for food, but Yahweh shall destroy both. Now the body is not for fornication, but for Yahweh, and Yahweh for the body. And Yahweh hath both raised up Yahshua, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of the Messiah? Shall I then take the members of the Messiah, and make them the members of the harlot? By no means. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto Yahweh is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that cometh fornication, committeth fornication, sinneth against his own body. What, I, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are his. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Good evening again. Our first speaker will be Teresa Gabush. Sure. Okay. I won't be up here long. 
Um, well, it's wonderful to be here. Um, you know, I just stay humble and take everything as it comes lately. Um, you know, you sit there and wonder how you get into situations and, you know, and then you realize you're doing them all on your own and, um, but you're not because you're always there and he's the one that's guiding you and showing you that there's more to life than this. Um, and, you know, you, I personally, like, dwell on some of the situations that he has put me through. Um, sometimes asking why, um, but, you know, it's, I've come to realize a lot um, of things about myself that Yahweh has shown me through the trials and the heartache and the pain that I have gone through in life. Um, I don't know, like most of you, I believe, know um, the situation with my kid's father. And, um, and I am able to lay that whole thing right on, like, the migration. Um, and him personally showing me something through that has given me a lot of stability of what I'm going through with this child. Um, you know, it's like I have five children and, and neither father is there, okay? So, you know, um, I'm taking as it comes, but I'm involved with a program that has really been opening my eyes, um, but it's Yahweh that's doing the opening. and showing me what's within me which is him and you know it, it's just you know just a lot of um you know the qualities and you know stuff um because we are the tabernacles of him you know he we we are not of our own as the scripture was just saying um and i've tried to read didn't work i've tried to study didn't work um children keep me busy and going. Um, I was able to sit down and watch this um, one show, though. I actually told Tara about it. It was about, it's on Netflix. You guys should check it out if nobody's checked it out yet. It's, um, is Genesis real or, um, I think it's, is Genesis real? I believe that's what it was. Um, you could ask me later. Um, but as I was sitting there watching it, it like blew my mind back because a lot of the stuff that I learned in school with, um, you know, it tells you a lot about the, um, how people thought the world came to be evolution or is there this really genesis that it really happened and how they thought like different layers of rock in like the Grand Canyon correlate with places showing the flood you know, they're, they were investigating more on what did the flood really happen? Well, yeah, it happened, but it was only in an area. That's what people thought. Um, but it didn't. It was a whole world type thing. It wasn't just in one area. Um, and you know, it was very interesting. And then they even went into like the very itty bitty details of our cells and then out to the vast of the universe. So, um, it, it, it was it was good and I was able to and Yahweh showed me that it was um, like a lot of stuff that I learned while I was in school about how you know we're a speck on a speck on a speck you know it's like there's so much so much um, and you know we just have to have our faith and keep the strength in this teaching um, and Yahweh will bring us through pretty much everything and anything so um, I think I want to take a seat because I don't really have much to say. It's just, you know, I come to get edified because uh, I need it. <laughs> so with that, thank you. Our next speaker will be Latara Burley. I'm just blowing up your whole name. <laughs> la la la, la tower. <laughs> okay.
toy with this thing. Uh, I don't know where we can fit. Got some of this. Good uh, evening. <laughs> um, I'm um, thankful for being here. Um, it's a blessing to be able to come to class. Hey. <laughs> She's so cute. But it's a blessing um to be able to come um here in this class and um um I enjoy what you have, you know, to say and it's just in, anybody that has anything to say about Yahweh, Yahshua, it's a um it's a blessing and um I don't really haven't really been studying up on like one particular thing because um you know a lot has been going on also, you know, everybody got things that they, you know, go through. But um, what, when I read this, um, the scripture read, it was one thing for in particular that um, had been pointed out to me. And I've, I've seen it before. I've seen it, you know, other classes go over. But um, if you can start um, at, I think it was, I guess, 14. Start at 14 and... Um, it, it goes with like the body and how Yahweh dwells among us and, you know, dwells within us. So we won't have to go like outside to look for him because he's right within us. And before coming to um, class, um, you know, they'll say like, go to church. That's the Lord's house. But that's not true because <laughs> it's in here. It says that he dwells in temples not made with man's hands. So um, start at 14. 1 Corinthians 6 and 14. And now O him hath both raised up the master and will also raise us up by his own power. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of the Messiah? Shall I then take the members of the Messiah and make them the members of the harlot? Okay, so know ye not that, the bo that your bodies are the members of the Messiah? And out there they teach that the, um, the building... Or whatever, it's a whole bunch of buildings. So which one is it? It's saying the building that like that is the member of the Messiah. But here it's saying that your body are the members of the Messiah. Um, keep going. Shall I then take the members of the Messiah and make them the members of a harlot? May it never be so. What know ye not that he which is joined to be a harlot is one body? Mm -hmm. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. But he that is joined unto the master is one spirit. He that is joined unto, well here it says, but he that is joined unto Yahweh is Yahweh. one spirit. And we know that Yahweh is one spirit. He's not mm -hmm. separated. He's not a trinity. He's a unity. Keep reading. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Mm -hmm. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which is in you, mm -hmm. which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own? So the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And um, when you go back to Genesis, like this whole, this whole pattern right here like it shows how Yahweh is within us and how he dwells within us because if let's go back to um Genesis the first chapter where he says let's make man in our image is that Genesis 1 and 26 I think okay. Genesis 1 and 26 mm -hmm. and Yahweh said let us make man in our image after our likeness mm -hmm. let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Yahweh is going to make us in his image and um, his likeness. So whatever, like what we see Yahweh doing, Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua, like what we see um, him doing is Yahweh is pure spirit and he took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim and then he um, took on the flesh as Joshua the Messiah and here like when we have these like when I look at these charts and I see them like painted out like everything from here you can see how he is we are made in his image and his likeness and he dwells like right within us so like we don't have to go nowhere we don't have to you know run to no place or be confused about 
talking to our creator because he is right within us and you can go right within yourself and talk to him and I, I just I, I love the fact that I could come to that understanding because you know if when, when you're out there and you're out there in the world and you're trying to find God or you're trying to find you know some type of peace people are running to any and everything to try to find peace within themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like they're they're running to if they can't find that peace, they'll find anything that that will make them happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll find some people may turn to like drugs, some people may turn to alcohol. That's that's really it's kind it's kind of like their God because anything you giving power to or you you yielding to like that's your God. Mm -hmm. So you might yield to that drug or you might yield to that alcohol, you might yield to that sex. You know what I'm saying? You might yield to that man because that's your that's your peace. That's where you run into. But Yahweh in the scripture is telling you that you don't have to run to Yahweh. He's right within you. He dwells right within you. And that I just I just think that that's just coming coming here and he opening up your understanding and he and he's showing you like this this, the, this chart right here, this pattern, how. Yahweh came into shape and form, and then with the children of Israel, get that scripture, um, go into Exodus, and um, get what he tells um, Moses to build the um, tabernacle. I don't know what um, chapter it is. But it says make, where is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, 25 and 8. 25 and 8. This is Exodus 25, 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Mm -hmm. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Mm -hmm. So he's telling them to make, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among me. And you see right here um, with the children of Israel coming out um, of Egypt that they came and this was where it's the type in the shadow it's not the real thing but it's the type in the shadow of how Yahweh dwelt among them and you can see that this was the tabernacle pattern that he told Moses to make it after all things so this this is exactly you can put this to your body and see how Yahweh dwells right among you or right within you and it's just it's just, oh my goodness, it's so much. It's, it's just so much to this gospel that that Yahweh shows you. It's, it was something on my mind. It was something that was on my mind. And um, hopefully I, I, I'll pick it up. But, it, but, oh my goodness, it was something that I, I was trying to, um, I was thinking about before I got here on the floor. But, yeah, Yahweh hopefully will come back to me. But, um we don't have to go like outside of you know anywhere else this is the truth and he's going to show you with um things with proof and evidence that how he is within us and he dwells among us um go to uh let me see where i want to go where did i want to go Okay, so we read in Genesis where it says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so, okay, when Yahweh came out of pure spirit and he had to go down, he, he came out of pure spirit and took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim, then he had to come down, you know, to the earth plane and at, in the flesh as Joshua the Messiah. So... This is his purpose. He he's the author. He's our finisher. So when we go through things, and this is this is what I came to understand and to realize is it's just beautiful. When we go through things, and it's like sometimes you can be up, and then sometimes you can be down. You can be happy, and then you can be depressed. But it it's, it's all going according toward going according to the death, the burial, and the resurrection, because. This was a death when y'all when Yahweh had to come down here to this earth plane. This this was like a, a death for him. And when we when he come down to the um earth plane, it was like a death, and then he had to go right back up here into pure spirit. So when we come down, we come out of Yahweh Elohim, we come down in the flesh, and then when we die, we have to go to the ground. He had to come down here in the flesh because this is he had to come down to the earth plane. So when we die, we have to go right back to that earth. We got to go right back to that dust and go right back 
to um, pure spirit. So the things that are happening with the with the children of Israel get um, get when he showed Abraham um, the the promised land. Oh, he was in the um, he was in Canaan's land, but he was in the promised land. He showed him the land, and he told him that his seed would go down in um, in into bondage. Because it's it's the same thing. Like if if Yahweh created us in His image and His likeness, what He does or what Yahshua the Messiah does, we're going to have to go through that same thing. We're going to have to go through that death-like state, and you know, like the children of Israel was down here in the land of Egypt, and then they had to come through the wilderness of Sinai and go through Canaan's land. It's the same thing. Even like. When you when you're born as a child, like that baby, that that baby has to um come to ha has to come out of that them tubes. Wait, wait, I don't know, I don't know if it's here, but they have to go down and then they have to they're up, they're up and then when it's time for that baby to be born, it has to turn all the way down and then when it come out of the mom and it goes right back up. It's the same thing that Yahweh did when he was here. In that pure spirit state, he had to come to this shape and form and go through that death-like state, come down to the earth, and then go right back up. So when you go through things in your life, like it's going to be like an up and down situation. You know what I'm saying? You're going you're gonna to see that death, that burial, and that resurrection when you go through things. But it's Yahweh that's doing it. It's not you. You see what I'm saying? It's not about you. It's not. I mean, it's your life. He's using you, but it's Yahweh that's pretty much carrying this whole purpose because that's why like these charts here you see this circle keep going on you see that you know everything is going back in a circle in a circle because it's Yahweh's plan that's doing the the turning like he's the one that's that's turning these pages and, and, and continuing this thing to go on because it's testifying of him that he's the one and that he's dwelling among you and that he's doing the whole thing so um go what did, what did I ask for I have it as Genesis 15 and 13. Mm -hmm. I can just read it. Genesis this is 15 read. and 13. Okay. Then he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land mm -hmm. that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. So Abraham was up here. Abraham was already up in Canaan's land or the promised land. And his seed, he had to go down. Now, did he have kids already? I don't think he had kids yet. Was was that, that's what, he? it was before he had it. So Yahweh had told him that before he even had it. So he knew that his seed had to come down and was in, had to be in, in bondage. And then, um, keep reading. 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve or judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Mm-hmm. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning heart that passed between those pieces. Okay, that was it. Um, yeah, so, that, so um, his seed had to go down. Um, and be um, in bondage to the um, Egyptians and then had to come right back up and then he was given, he, um, they was given that um, promised land. And it's the same thing like with um, with this story here. Um, oh my goodness, it's, what was I reading? Go to, um, let me see, with, um, my goodness. I can't, I can't, um, oh my goodness, I can't bring this out. It was a, it, the, the same thing that happened here, you can take it and you can line it up. Everything is like they're going back down and they're coming back up. They're going back down and they're coming back up. It's like a death. It's like a death you see down here. The same thing that happened, but then it's a resurrection that occurs also. And so you see that. Everything that Yahweh is doing or Yahweh did back here, what, what Elohim did back here, you'll see it happening with us and you'll see it happening with the events that's going on through the dispensation and, and, and ages. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. I can't bring like every single uh, 
point out. I guess I need to study a little bit more, but I, I know that Yahweh, when he, when he is dwelling among us and that we are made in his image and in his likeness. So what we see the children of Israel doing is for, it's, it's not for really the children of Israel. It's to show Yahshua, or it's to show, point to um, Yahweh and for him to, for, for we to have witnesses of who he is. I guess I could put it that way. It's more that I can I can't really bring out because when I was studying it, I was like, oh my goodness, so I guess I should have just wrote it down. <laughs> and but um it it was it was a lot and it was everything what what I had seen was like it was like a up and down um state. It was that that going around to that earth plane and then coming back right back up to pure spirit. And so everything that I see I saw was like the um, Abraham coming down and his seed um, being in bondage and going back up. And even with, I can't point out the principle, but I, I, I seen it, but I can't remember the principle in it with Adam and Eve. They going through that death like state and then, um, you know, going back right back up. And it's just, it's, it's a lot, but um, hopefully I can study a little bit more. I'm not going to ramble on because if I don't have the witnesses, then I don't want to talk about it. So, <laughs> um, just know that Yahweh is is um, within us, and that you know anything that you're going through is not is for your learning, but it's not you know why me? You know it's not just to pick on you. It's to point to the one who was supposed to be here to save us, and that's Joshua. It's really the point to Joshua. So I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So um, with that, just have faith and know that. His purpose is already this purpose is already carried out and he already knows determined the beginning, the end from the beginning. So, you know, with that just have faith to know that no matter what you're going through, that he he's going to be the one that's going to carry you through. So, you know, there's no other L, no other God that's going to be able to do that because you always said that I am Yahweh and there's no other. So with that, I'll just take my seat and thank you for the time. <laughs> Our next speaker for this evening will be Dr. Ladora Nichols. <laughs> Can you make it? Some of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Always. Yeah, I can be on my dead man. I'm going to see something. Oh, I can't put it on there because I got the thing. Okay, yeah, we'll put it right there. There you got it. Good evening. It's always a pleasure to have anything to say about our Heavenly Father. And I enjoy the first two speakers because. You know, Yahweh puts us on one accord anyway, you know, because we are up here. And that's how we get, we can relate to things that happens in our life. Because, I mean, you know, like Teresa said, you know, you know, it's all about him. We cannot do anything without him. You know, I mean, uh, it all leads really back to him. Because, I mean, we have to go that full circle. We die, we, we have a death of burial and a resurrection every day. Just in our daily lives, the things that we go through. Yahweh push you through things to let you know you have to call on him. You go call on him. You go call on him. Just like the, like the world do their calls on, you know, when something happens, they always call on Jesus, God, or whatever. But Yahweh has us where we know where, who to call on. Because I know I have been down and I know the situation I have been here really blessed me beyond measure. I couldn't do that by myself. There's no way I could have done anything by myself. No way. You know, we all have that macho attitude that we, whatever we do, we good at what we do and we doing it on our own, but it's not true. 
it's not true. You know what I mean? Because I mean, when 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 I bent, I was cleaning up, and when I bent over, I just heard that my that oh that muscle tip, snap. I said, "Oh, Father, please," you know. Lauren said, "What's happening?" I I had to crawl. I was vacuuming everything. I was bending over too much, and I already know I have a bad back. You know, this messed up in my back and everything from a young girl, you know what I mean? So I just knew I shouldn't have been doing all that. They stopped me from doing housework a long time ago, but I never stopped. You know, Yahweh, Yahweh took care of me when I didn't even know him. When I was calling on Lord God and Jesus Christ, he took care of me, and I didn't even know it, you know? So I had to literally crawl to the sofa. And, and Lauren said, what's wrong? I said, don't worry about y'all, we got this. And I just, I just, I just was down there on, the, on my knees, leaning on the sofa like this, just praying to him. Yahweh, please, just let me get up, you know what I mean? Cause, because I cannot stay down here like this here. Just let me get up. Lawrence, he trying to come up in there, trying to, I said, just, you can't touch me. I was in so much of pain, I said, no, just... Some kind of way to subside that pass. And I prayed to Yahweh and I just rubbed that back. I just prayed to him and rub and rub and rub and rub. And I stayed down there for about an hour just praying. Just asking him to give me the strength just to get up. You know what I mean? Because whatever I wasn't, hadn't done, I wasn't going to do it. But I was really what I was doing. I was just on the, I was vacuuming the, the, the last, the, in the living room. And that's when it went out by me bending over. Cleaning the bed from the tub and everything, instead of me squatting, mm -hmm. I've been straight over and I can't do that. I'm not supposed to do that, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's to let me know that, you know, you know what you're not supposed to do, but yet and still, you do it. You know, so, you know, you have to call on him, you know what I mean? So I can relate to that, you know, I don't do nothing. I walk with his blessing, you know what I mean? I wake up, I call on him all day long, you know. And, you know, I guess we, we say, what is this woman be, be doing up in there, you know? You're hollering all day long, you know, and I be, you know, I have my little music, I be playing it. I have my, you know, my my song from, you know, back home when I was back home and, and the choir was singing. You know, I have all the uh, CDs and all that, you know what I mean? And I be listening to them. And I, it, it, y already just showed me that, you know, that migration that I did to out of New Orleans. That's mind boggling you know every time i make a step i wake up i think about how blessed i am you know where i was at and where i'm at now where he has me at now is a blessing it's truly a blessing all praise honor and glory goes to him all day long all the time you know and i thank him for the the vessels that he had put in my life to help me to continue to praise him you know, not me, to praise him. Those vessels that he put in my life to praise him. It's not for me. It's not for the glorify me. It's to glorify him. To let him know that, you know, he loves me. He brought me from a mighty long way. And I don't intend to go back, regardless of what goes down. Last week, I couldn't make it, but guess what? I just went too much of pain. They gave me a shot, but... Lawrence say, I said, Lawrence, his doctors already told me it's going to take a while because I really pulled that muscle back there, you know what I mean? And already, you know, the disc is rough. So I said, well, you know what? I'm going to do that pain because I've been in a lot of pain. Just dealing with people in general is a pain. <laughs> you know, it's hard that like we say to have people that don't care, you can't relate to that, you know, don't know nothing about Yahweh, that you try to, you know, talk to her and they, they, they look at you like you're crazy. You know what I mean? And to me, they are the crazy one, you know, because, you know, even if they had any inkling of what gives them the, the movement, the things that they do, you know, the thing, you know, and they, they you know, they think it's, oh, oh, I did this here, I did this here, all about me. No, it's not. You better learn how to get some praise of somebody, baby, other than yourself, because it's not you. It's a higher power than you. It has to be. You know, you didn't do this on your own, you know what I mean? But, you know, I pray to him, you know, just keep me where I can keep going to class, 
get edified on the word, you know, learning, you know, progressing in my understanding. Not trying to be bigger, because I can't be, it, you can't get on the outside of him. He's all in all, and that's also, it's nothing that I could get on the outside of. Because he's everything. So, you know, I just pray that he just keep me humble. Keep me with an understanding that it is all him and not me. And whatever he put in front of me, I can't endure it. You know, you know, it, I, I, I loved, you know, what it is, Hebrew what, 12 and 6. You know, I love that scripture. I love it, you know what I mean? Because it, 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 it speaks volume to, to our lives and what we have to go through, you know what I mean? We don't know some of the things that people has, has, has you know, people just are so cruel and so unthoughtful. You know, and it, 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 it's a shame that you have to deal with them and live with them, but you have to. That's why I say, you know, it's a blessing that Yahweh has stepped into my life. Because at one time I had a bad attitude with people like that, you know what I mean? You know, and now I can, you know, I, you know it don't, it, they don't bother me no more. You know, they used to, you know what I mean? You know, it, you know they, they tolerate you so bad till you don't know what to say to them, you know what I mean? And it, you know, cursing them out ain't going to do no good. You know, I, blasting them and all that and fighting them is not going to do all that good. You know what I mean? So, you know, I have to just leave that up to Yahweh. I'm at a point where Yahweh just said, you know, I have this here. You don't have to deal with this here. You know, this is a struggle that you don't have to go through. He fights all our battles, and I am so glad. I am so glad he fights my battle because I can't win with him anyway. They're of this world, and we can't deal with nobody of this world. Yahweh has to do that. You know, they're on a, they on a different uh, uh, master, as you would say. They're on, the, you know, they're on the Satan. You know, the, you know, the God of this world, they ain't, they're not with us. We have to live here, but we are not of this world. We have to live in it. We all have to live in it. But that don't mean that we have to endure just what they have to, they, they've given us. Because we don't, we, he do give us some kind of understanding and direction of where we should be at. And we shouldn't have to worry about this and that and that and that. We don't, you know. Yahweh keeps us all on the same thing. We get up here every week, after week, after week, and we all are. It's something that we didn't, that somebody said on the floor that will enlighten you to what you're going through. And what it is that he has us. We don't have to worry about that. That scripture tells us that, you know. We, we are Yahweh. We of of Yahweh. You know, he, he created us. We don't have to worry about what other people are saying about us. We don't have to do that. It, it, it's not a, you know, that we got to run a race with them. You know, we just got to know that whatever Yahweh has given us, don't lose it. Don't waver in it. Don't, don't lose it. If it's just that much, it, it's just enough for us. For you, for me, whatever he has given us, it's always something different. You know, it's different. But we all, we all still one of him. It's all one spirit. It's just one. We are one, a unity, one, not trinity, like people think. That's why they read this Bible, they're thinking, oh, because they don't know what, what they're reading. It might say, Lord God, they, they, you know, it's different stages if they're just new. You know, if, if Yahweh is spirit, how could you detect spirit? Something had to happen for him to come down out of pure spirit, into shape and form, you know, and everything. So how you think that, as they say, this body got up on this cross? Something had to happen. In the understanding of why this body came into this position here, they just don't know it. So in order for them to say that Yahweh is spirit and spirit, God is love and all this here, they don't even know the meaning of that. And it's a good thing Yahweh has brought us down, all of us down and sit us down and give us some kind of understanding of what he is. You know, what he's all about. We cannot, we, we, we cannot sit down here and think that none of this exists. 
It's for our edification. It's not for, 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 for just up here. Like we said, when we come, we come here, we need to come here with the understanding that Yahweh is real. Ain't no fake Jacob about this here. It's not, it, it, this is not, a, this is, this is nothing to play with. You know, this is nothing to play with. I am, I, you know, if anybody, I know. I was down there. I'm telling you, you never know what y'all we could do till you hit rock bottom. And even if you know him, when you hit rock bottom, he puts you in a position where you definitely have to call on him. I mean, call on him. And I pray to him, not for just for me. I say, I say, Yahweh, I need you. My, I'm, I am suffering, you know, and I don't know which way to go. But he was right there. He was right there. And my poor blind brother trying to help me, you know, and I'm helping him, you know, and I just say, Father, you got both of us here. The blind helping the blind, you know what I mean? And just to call on him. Just to call on him. I be sitting there thinking about Yahweh and I just be, Lawrence, I could hear it in your voice. I'm a cry baby. I tell anybody, I, you know, I get emotional about anything, you know. Sometimes, you know, you can't see it, but uh, I cry for, I cry looking at movies and everything, you know what I mean? All kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm a cry baby, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know. But uh, just talking about Yahweh, you know, these are tears of joy, happiness, you know. Not nothing sad. Because I don't care what he put me through, I, you know, he brings me out of it. You know, bring me out of it. Like I say, you know, it, it could be worse. You know what I mean? And I thank God, thank to him that it's not worse. You know what I mean? But guess what? If, if, he, if, if, if he see fit for bring me down, he know how to bring me up. Because he, 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 he knows how to bring me up, and I have, you know. And I just, you know, pray that, you know, you know, that, you know let's just stay in class. Don't let nothing or nobody change that talk. People saying things about you. You know, I was in New Orleans and I used to, I, w I went through that. How people was talking about each other and then they let, they let that. Well, you didn't have no faith in Yahweh if you let that happen. Yeah, because somebody said something that you dislike, that you dislike that they said about you. That ain't got nothing to do with Yahweh. You know, that ain't going to keep me. You could... <laughs> You could call me Pickaninny, you could call me Boo Boo, you could call me anything you want. I will be here. Boo Boo is here. <laughs> I see people use, you know, say things to people and then all of a sudden, you know, they get an attitude and they stop coming to class. Not me. Not me. You know, we say, you, you ride the bus? Yep. It wouldn't be for my brother. Yep, we would ride the bus, you know. And I know that bus day, that past day, don't it stops at, at about six o'clock. So I know that's out. You know what I mean? But if I get here, I know I gotta ride. You know what I mean? If I get in, I told, I used to tell my brother all the time, we'll catch the bus if we don't have no ride, bro. You know, I said, cause the bus put y'all right there on the corner, right there past the driveway. Here, you know what I mean? So you know what? Well, you know, I rode the bus on many days. In New Orleans, and I had to catch three buses to get to class, and I was doing it every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, I was there. I was in class and everything, so I know I wasn't gonna come here. He didn't leave me back there, and then I'm gonna come here and denounce that I know anything about Yahweh. I don't think so. You know, I don't think so. You know, if it's just me in the building. We'll, I'll be here, you know, you know, because this is what we need, you know, so just, you know, let, you know, Yahweh is awesome, and don't let no one take us away from that, you know, building or nothing, because Yahweh, just like Tyler said, Yahweh is, it dwells within us, not this building, if we lose this building, we still have Yahweh within us. We could gather in the park. I remember we was in McDonald's, huh? Burger King? McDonald's. McDonald's at times. We had a good time. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get in the door. <laughs> I just couldn't believe that. 
The Lord just, I said, you know what? Satan just think he got us, but he ain't got us because this is just a building that we enter to praise Yahweh. But he thought he was going to keep us out. You know, I told him, I said, you can take, take, the, take the lock off that bad boy. You know what I mean? If you want to put it back on there. But yeah, guess what? We went to, we went to Burger King or McDonald's, whatever, and we had a good time. See, Yahweh, like I said, he don't dwell in, in temples made with people's hands. You know what I mean? With, mm -mm. He would do all right with them. And we took that and that what we had and went right there and sit down there and had a good time. You know, a good time. I hear every time somebody, oh, girl, you know, we had a good time that day. They said we wasn't in class. Yeah, we were. We just in McDonald's having, you know, Burger King, whatever. We had a good time. You know what I mean? Right there. You know what I mean? You know, I don't want to move too much because I. <laughs> feel like I want to pass out. <laughs> oh, that pain shot did too, too much. But anyway, we just need to know that Yahweh has us. And we don't need to just wonder. And I ask him every day just to bless me and my brother. Well, my family, period. I, I, you know, I always, I always say, you know, I be talking to my son. He said, Mom, what you tell? I say, look here. But <laughs> He said, well, how my sister is? I said, baby, your sister all right. You know, I pray, I pray for my, my girls all day long. I pray for my girls all day long, you know. I said, Yahweh, now you know. You know, them girls over there mean so much to me. You know what I mean? You know, and, you know I wouldn't, I, I was sick and sitting there saying, Mama, how you going to come over here? And I said, girl, look here, I'll be over there. Yahweh make a way. He'll make a way out of nowhere for you. I was going over there. If she needed me, I was going over there. If I had to drag Lawrence with me, we was going over there on the bus. You know what I mean? We got, it's, it's a way of getting over there. You know what I mean? She said, no, Mom, I'm, uh, I'm all right. Jazz there. I said, oh, okay. Jazz, okay. <laughs> Jazz is the baby. I said, <laughs> <laughs> you wait for mama to do everything for her. I said, yeah, rub up, eat, rub up. No, I go. I say, oh, God, go eat up. But, you know, <laughs> Yahweh, he really loves us, you know. You know, he, we, we know that, you know. It's nothing that will, you know, take us away from that, you know what I mean? Just, you know, just stay in class, you know, and always remember that whatever he put us through, he can bring us out of it because he, he, he will. You know, and just just hold each other, love the brother. You know what I mean. You know, find out about them when they're sick. You know, hold their hand up, cause he holding us up. He keeps our hands up. You know what I mean. Keep that mind going. You know what I mean. Keep in mind. I I be jumping in my sleep. I, I said, well, what's going on? You know. And then I got I be jotting stuff down. You know, how you see something on television, you get to jotting it down. I said, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we still be there. And he keeps showing me. I'm going to share it with y'all, but I can't share it now because I'm really hurting. But Yahweh showed me something that I've been trying to wrap my mind around for a long time, ever since I came out of Katrina, the migration of how he brought me out of Katrina. The steps. How they go according to the Yahweh. The steps, the seven steps. You see the seven steps? He showed me. And I'm 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 gonna bring it out. You know, I'm just getting some more details, but you know, every every, every time I think about it, you know, and I, I talk to my, 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 my children back at in New Orleans, they tell me the same thing, Mom, when you coming on. He always telling me don't do it. <coughs> he telling me don't do it. No, don't do it. You know, they want me there. He said, don't do it, you know. So, you know, I'm being obedient to Yahweh. He brought me out of there, telling me don't go back. You know, for what reason? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he haven't told it to me, revealed it to me yet, but uh, I'm trusting in him, you know what I mean? You know, I did fall with You know, I don't have no desire to go back there to live. You know what I mean? Not, not right now. You know what I mean? They're worse than we are in Florida here now. You know what I mean? So, you know, no, I'm not, you know, but... uh. You know, I'm 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 gonna get it together. You know, he really showing me something. You know, and it, it's something that flashes in my mind all day long. You know what I mean? Especially when I come to class, how he brought me out of New Orleans, and that was a journey, a three day journey that he brought me out of New Orleans. Cause I left on a Friday and I got here on a Sunday. 
And I, he, I kissed the ground when I jumped off of that bus. Mm -hmm. I sure did. I got down there and kissed the ground when I jumped off of that bus, yeah, because he showed me something. And then I had seven trip stops that I had to pick up a wheelchair, take it off the bus, put it on the bus, take it off the bus, transport all them time, just to get from Arkansas to here, because that's where I went at, in Arkansas first. You know, but I'm telling you, I, I did a three journey, New Orleans, Texas, Arkansas. Now, why I went that way, I don't know. <laughs> But that was your always purpose, you know what I mean? And then that last stop <coughs> was here, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's your always purpose, but I, he showed it to me. Just stay in class and don't let nothing take you out of class, not nothing. You know, regardless of what goes on, you know, just hold on to whatever Yahweh has given us and just, just run that race. We're in a race, baby. We in that race, you know, and guess what? It's only for what? It ain't for the swift, but for those that endure. Hebrews, Hebrews 12 and 6. Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom he always loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastising, Yahweh shall deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. All right. And then 11 and 6. 11 and 6. Yeah, both of them, yeah. See what... But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's it. And with those three words, I say hallelujah. Thank you. Go ahead and hit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I can't get down there, man. I might hit you a couple of times, but I... <laughs> Thank you, man. Oh. Thank you. All right. And our next speaker will be Dr. Charles Marshall. You knew it. Speed one of those, sweetie. Okay, you wanna put that in your pocket? Yeah, you're good, thank you. Good evening, good evening. Get me uh, First Corinthians, uh, third chapter, please. Please. First Corinthians 3 and 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in the Messiah. Now this is Paul, okay? And uh, Paul is writing a letter here to the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, go on. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Mm -hmm. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So here he's talking about how that he's brought them up. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's basically what he's saying is that uh, he was, he's been teaching them according to the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is like, that is like the breast, the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. So he's been feeding them you see, the law and the prophets. He hadn't really gotten into the meat because they weren't able to take it yet. Don't we all want... <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah? Okay, read. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? See, now, if you want to know, you understand, if you're spiritual... Or not spiritual, okay? If you have envy, if you have strife, if you have division, that's showing that you're carnal. You know, it's just that it's just that simple. And it's like Dr. Kinley said. If you, do you want to know if you have the Holy Spirit? What is the sign that you have the Holy Spirit, and that you love each other? Yes. It's impossible for us to love each other from a carnal standpoint because 
there's too many personalities in here that just, you understand? But once you once you have that Holy Spirit, then you're able to look past the flesh. Now you see, it's just like I got up here and I talked about the milk, showing forth that that's the law and the prophets. We're showing forth like a, a baby when you when you first have that when you have that baby, you breastfeed that baby. You don't start giving it meat. You don't start giving it solid food. You know, you don't you ain't gonna take and hack up a carrot and start giving it a carrot or anything like that. You see. It has to be milk. And, they're, and the scientists and everybody are telling you now that breast milk is better for the baby because it has antibodies and has the nutrients. It has what the baby needs. Okay? So therefore, do you love the brother? That's all it takes. Read. For, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollos, and yet ye are not carnal? I can remember, uh, I came, would come into class and, and somebody would say, well, my dean. Well, what dean are you? They wouldn't even ask you what class you were in. They would say, what dean are you under? You remember that, Judy? You know? Well, what dean? Well, what does it matter what dean you're under? It shouldn't matter what dean you're under. You know? The thing of it is, what you should be doing is, what, what do you know? What have you done with what you know? Yes. You see, there's people that sit around and all they want to do is be fed. You understand? But they don't want to do nothing. They don't want to do any work. They don't want to do anything. All they want to do is be fed. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feed them what they think they should get, they complain about it. Well, damn it, learn to cook. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's that simple. You know, Jennifer's glad I learned to cook. <laughs> Read from a physical standpoint. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as this, uh, Yahweh gave to every man? See, now these, the, 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 the deans are just men. Yes. They're just people. You understand? You're not understanding, if you get into that, that frame of mind, you're not understanding who's doing the teaching. And Paul's about to get into that. Okay, read. I have planted, Apollos watered, but Elohim gave the increase. Now here Paul's saying, now see Paul went to Corinth, he basically, now here's the thing about Corinth here at this time, if you read keep on reading, and, and, and Philippians and so on and so forth. See, Paul went to those schools, basically helped start those schools, and then he would go off and go to another school because he, he did a lot of traveling. And a lot of times the schools would get mad at him because he was there and left them, you know. And there's one thing I've been finding that's quite consistent a lot in the, a lot of Paul's writings. Paul chastises them. And Paul tells them, look, I came in, I planted it. In other words, I gave you the basics, mm -hmm. now work with it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you, if you've got the Holy Spirit, you ought to be able to feed yourself. That doesn't mean you don't need to come to class. It doesn't mean you, you understand. But you need to be able to feed yourself. I see growth in this class. You know, of people being able to feed themselves. You see? And that's what you need. You need to be, you don't need to be able to depend upon your dean or anyone else. You've got to depend upon yourself. It's the Holy Spirit in you that is going to give you salvation. Not the Holy Spirit in, in Joel or any other dean. You see? It's the Holy Spirit in you. And if you, and as, uh, as uh, uh, John says in Revelation, as actually Yahshua said in Revelations, and he said it to one of the schools, ye are neither hot nor cold, and I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You see, you've got to be hot for this teaching. You've got to be, you're supposed to be a minister. You're supposed to be on fire. You're supposed to be a minister, like a flame of fire. You see, just like at Pentecost back here. You see, it was cloven tongues, now cloven tongues. What is a cloven tongue? It'd be like 
cloven, split. What does that represent? The law and the prophets. You see, what a, what a lot of people, and especially out here in the world, do not understand that a lot of these laws, a lot of these dietary restrictions, a lot of these things that went on back here in, under the law, in the Old Testament, if you will, the, one, the law that he gave to the Jews and to the Jews only, okay, was trying to teach you something from a spiritual standpoint. Okay? Now you take an, an, they, an animal, to eat that animal, it had to have a cloven hoof, and it had to chew the cud. Okay? In other words, chewing the cud means that the animal would take, it would swallow the grass like a cow, it would swallow the grass, Okay, it would bring it back up again, and it would chew it, grind it up some more, you see, and then bring it, take it back down. Well, you see, that is trying to tell. Now, a horse doesn't have a cloven hoof. Chews the cud. Doesn't chew the cud? Sorry. Okay, I've been corrected. I, and I've been corrected by a real horse lover, too. So. What well, you see, a, a pig. A pig has a cloven hoof, but it doesn't chew the cud. So it was unclean. Why? Because a pig was bad? No. I like bacon. <laughs> you know? I like pork chops. You understand? But why was it that unclean? Because it was trying to show you that under this age and dispensation, you see, the proper food that you eat should be the law and the prophets, a cloven hoof, and then what you should you do with that? Once you, once you take and you get that in and you take that in, you should bring it back up again and you should work with it. There's too many lazy people in class that don't want to work with something. All they want to do is be fed, fed, fed. But they don't want to work with anything. You see? You're, respons you're responsible for your own eternal life. You're responsible, not me, not Joel, not anybody else. You're the one responsible. You see, a fish. To eat a fish, it had to have fins and have scales. Okay, catfish, don't have scales. Couldn't eat it. Law and the prophets. You see, all of these things back here are trying to teach you something about today. <clears throat> now, Yahshua came in and he fulfilled this that was in the, the, the things that, of the law that was back here that was physical, he fulfilled those. But now that we take these things and we bring them by over here, and now it's spiritual, it's not physical. So now I can eat that pig. You see, but from a spiritual standpoint, I don't eat pig. I eat a cow. You see, because now I work with the law and the prophets. Somebody gets up and they get into something. You look at it. You, you hear it. And you go, hmm, and you go home, and you work with it. It's, you know, it's just... That's when you know that you're hot. That's when you know that the Holy Spirit is working with you. Okay, so here Paul is saying that, that he, he planted it, and Apollos watered it, but he's going to get even more detailed than that, okay? But only Elohim can give the increase. Like we say all the time, I can't save you. There's nothing I can do to save you. You see, we say in this class, they say out here in, 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 in Christianity that they want you to have a personal relationship with Jesus, you see, with, with, with God. But yet... They give you the wrong name. They don't even give you the proper name. Now, how can you have a proper relationship without a proper name? Something's wrong. You understand? In class here, we say that we want you to have a personal relationship with Yahshua. Well, if you've got a personal relationship with someone, you don't want me to interfere with it. Isn't that right? You see? It's between you and it's between Yahshua. You see? Read. Eight. Now that he, uh, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now see that he that planteth and he that watereth are one. That's Joshua. You see, Paul may be the vessel that is being used. Apollo may be the vessel that is being used. You see, but it's Yahweh. It's Joshua 
that's doing the teaching. It's Yahshua that's causing you to hear. It's Yahshua that's causing you to understand. I'm out of the picture. Joel's out of the picture. Anybody that gets on the floor, Judy, she's out of the picture. As well as Judy can get up there, she's out of the picture. You see, it's up to you. You see, and it's up to you and your relationship with Yahshua. Read. For we are laborers together with Yahweh. Ye are Yahweh's husbandry. Ye are Yahweh's building. See, we are, we are His building. This is His body. You see, we are His, we are His bride. He's our husbandry. He's growing us. He planted us. He's growing us. You see, He's causing the increase. It's this is His plan and purpose. You see, it's not the dean's plan and purpose. It's Yahweh's plan and purpose. Read. According to the grace of Elohim, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Just like back here, you see, Yahweh put his spirit within Eliezer. Uh, uh, yeah, them, them two. <laughs> So anyhow, he put his spirit within them so that they could build this tabernacle right here. Right. He didn't depend upon... Now, remember, the children of Israel down here had, were building the treasure houses for Pharaoh. So they knew how to build. They were, they, were, they were wise in all manners of workmanship. But Yahweh, when it came to the tabernacle, which is representation of Yahshua, and also show how you are built according to this tabernacle... You see, he didn't leave that to a man. He put his wisdom, he put that in the man so that they, when they built that, it was him doing the building. He was just using the men. And that's all he's doing here. You're just being used. <laughs> but not abused. <laughs> you understand? You know, it's, it's like... One thing, uh, Dr. Kinley, and I used to, uh, back, in, back when I was younger in this teaching, I couldn't understand it because Dr. Kinley loved wrestling, professional wrestling, which if you know anything about professional wrestling, it's rigged. The, the, it's choreographed, you know, and it was rigged. And I s couldn't understand how come he liked, because it was wrestling, it was, it was rigged, it wasn't real. You know, it was a show, it was entertainment. And he said, and I still didn't catch this even back then, he said he liked it because it was just like life. Think about it. It's just like life. It's all predestined. You're just, it's like a play. It's like you're act, acting. <laughs> you know? But... It was just so neat because, and finally once, you know, years later, I finally understood, oh, okay, I can understand now. Yes, it was not real, but, <laughs> yes, read. 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahshua the Messiah. See, no man can lay the foundation. The only one that can lay the foundation is Yahshua the Messiah. And if you have a problem, then you talk to Yahshua about it. You know, it's like I, I told a couple of people before, I says, well, if you don't like the way it is, then get up and do it yourself. Change it. Do it the way you think it should be done then. You know, don't complain. Read. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. See, we're all going to be tried by fire. Mm -hmm. You understand? And your work, mm -hmm. what you've done, mm -hmm. is going to be tried by fire. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're, if you're on fire, if you're part of the fire, you're not going to get burned. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, Meshach, Abednego, and all them mm -hmm. dudes that was walking back there in the furnace. See, they didn't get burned. They didn't get burned because they were on fire. They were on fire for this gospel. And they had, they had the, see what we're being do, done, what, 
what we are being, we are being clothed in the righteousness of Yahweh. You understand? Now, of, of Yahshua. Now, Yahweh is a consuming fire, and we're being clothed in that fire. So, therefore, we're protected. It's just that simple. Now, if you're not on fire for this gospel, if you're not hot for this gospel, then, you know, you better turn the heat up a little bit because that's going to tell you where you stand. Okay? Read. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So you're going to get the reward of what you sow. And I don't know about you, but I take it pretty serious. Because, uh, man, I would hate to think mm -hmm. that I came all this way, that I, you know, sat here under this teaching, this magnificent, wonderful teaching, and then threw it all away. You know? Actually, Yahweh, Yahweh has taken every single person in this room right here, and He has given them some knowledge, some understanding, and wisdom about Him. Not about the world. I'm talking about Him. You understand? And it actually has showed us what love really is. None of us really understood what love was until we came down here. Now, you noticed all the songs on the radio? I'd say probably 90% of them are about love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's right. <laughs> And all the and the, and these these guys get up there and they sing this yeah. love song and all the girls are out there going oh my you know he's just singing to me yeah. how many times has that guy been married <laughs> you understand you understand we don't know nothing about love we really don't understand you see until you come down here and you see what Yahweh what Yahshua has done for you. Where he has brought each and every one of us from, you were just talking about it. See, see where he has brought us from. I'm talking physically, I'm talking psychologically, I'm talking mentally, I'm talking about your thought process. Your thought process is different now, and your thought process will change and keep changing because now, as it says in Philippians, the second chapter, let this mind be in you. That is also in him. We're it's family because not only are we going to look like him, but we're going to think like him because he's putting that mind or these attributes right within us so that we will conform into the image of him. It's that now that is a love story. That no matter how much I think I love a person. No matter how much I think I love or love my wife, I can't match that. You see, that is only a small token of what real, real love is. You see, that's what you come to realize when you come down here. And when you actually, honestly see this teaching, you know, and understand what he, what he has given us, the rest of the world out here, they don't understand anything about they don't even understand anything about this whole covenant. You understand? First of all, they're trying to keep aspects of this old covenant and they don't even understand it. Have the slightest idea. Now we come down here and he takes us and he shows us and we go back to Moses. We go back to the law. We go back to the prophets. And for the first time, we, start, we went to church all those years and we didn't know the first thing about this law. We didn't know the first thing about this old covenant. As a matter of fact, what I was taught when I went to church was, was this was this was God's dealings with the Jews. You know, that was his dealing with the Jews. But now he's dealing with us. We're the we're New Testament Christians. You understand? Ah. We're New Testament Christians. And now back in the day, okay. I happened to find one the other day. I can't believe it. 
I was told that I was a New Testament Christian. And this is what they gave me. Good news for modern man. This is the New Testament and the Psalms. You see? And I was told that everything I needed to know about Jesus was right here. Didn't even get, didn't even, didn't even need the old text because that was God's dealings with the Jews. Mm -hmm. You understand? But where did, you, but where did Yahshua go when he taught? He went back to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You say, well, how do you know that? Because the New Testament wasn't written yet. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's simple. Yeah. You can't go someplace that ain't there. You know, but yet that yeah, but yet that's all I needed to know, mm -hmm. and that's why when I came down here and attended my first class, I was dumb as a rock. Yes, I knew something about the Bible, or thought I did, you see, but I was dumb as a rock because I didn't, I hadn't tell you the truth, I hadn't even heard of a tabernacle. The only tabernacle I heard of was the, Nor uh, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. That's the only tabernacle I'd heard of. I didn't even know that there was a tabernacle back here. That's how, that's how much I knew. Did I know about the laws back here? I'd heard the Ten Commandments because they were drilled in my head. But I didn't know about these other 610 laws. Uh, 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 see, there's 613, so you take that 603. <laughs> I didn't know about those other laws. You see? The only ones I knew about was Ten Commandment, morality. You see? And I couldn't keep that. You see? I'm telling you, when you look at where you came from, where you look at, at where you were when you walked in these doors, okay, now then, you look at where you're at now in your understanding, you see, I don't know about you, but I can't go back. I can't go back to that. I don't know if I don't know when people walk out the when people spend time in here, you see, and then they walk out that door and don't come back. I don't know where they go. Where can you go? I mean, if you really understand this, it's this whole world has been torn down. There's no place to go. You know. It's, 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 it's mind-boggling to me. You see? Read. 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. See, you're going to be saved. What we're doing here is going to burn. All of this is going to burn. This is going to burn. All the works that I do, they're going to burn. Mm -hmm. Only thing that's going to be saved is what the Holy Spirit that Yahshua puts in with, puts in my soul. My soul with that Holy Spirit will be saved. But the rest is gone. The rest is nothing. You see, the, all of this stuff that's going out here, you see, all this chaos that's going on out here, you see, and oh man, do we have some chaos going on out here. I mean, it's just unbelievable, the chaos. We are seeing things in the political system you're going to see some things in the financial system, I'm telling you. It's about, they're, they're high right now because the stock market hit 2,000 and some. Oh, they're just high. But, how, death, burial, resurrection. It's going to come down. It's going to come way down. You understand? And religion, well, you see, the Pope's right-hand man is on trial right now for child abuse. You understand? I'm telling you, it's really sick out here. Mm -hmm. But don't worry about it because it's all going to burn. Mm -hmm. It's all going to burn. There's not going to be nothing of it left. There ain't even going to be a remembrance of it left. It's not even worth worrying about because you're not even going to remember it because you're going to be in heaven. Well, you should be in heaven now. You see, because your mind should be spiritual now. Your mind should be looking at the spiritual things and not the carnal things. Another thing, under the law you were to be circumcised. 
You understand? What was that doing? That was cutting away the flesh. Okay? And what's happening down here is we're all being circumcised from a spiritual standpoint. You see, we're having the flesh taken out of our eyes. We're able to look beyond the flesh. If you take your eyelids and you close them, what do you see? Nothing. So, but if you open your eyes, then you can see. And that's what Yahweh is doing. He is taking and circumcising us so that we can look beyond the flesh, get past the flesh, and look into the Spirit. All of this stuff back here that they didn't tell me about, that they didn't think was important to teach me about, because this was God's dealings with the Jews, you see, now I can look back and I can see that. I can see that that is trying to tell me something about Yahweh's plan and purpose, past, present, and future. You understand? It's just so. Hope. Hope. We teach hope down here. We teach hope down here. Sometimes people want to, don't want to see the hope. You talk about the hope, but because you say something about gloom and doom, that's the only thing they're looking at, is the gloom and doom. And when you start talking about hope, it just passes over their head. It's because you've got your mind on the carnal. It's because you're looking at the carnal. It's not, you're, you're not looking at the spirit. You're not looking beyond the flesh. That's the hope. You say, well, you're saying there's no hope in the flesh. That's right. That's right. There ain't no hope in the flesh. It's going to be rolled up like a scroll and burned to be remembered no more. So therefore, if you keep your eyes on the, on the Spirit, you, there's hope. There's more than hope. There's joy. As a matter of fact, there's righteousness, peace, and joy. Okay, read. 16, know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh and that the spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you? See, don't you know that you are the temple of Yahweh? You are the temple of Yahweh. You see, this tabernacle pattern here is showing forth how you were created in the image and the likeness of your creator. And you are the temple you understand? Now you say, well, that's the tabernacle. Well, the temple was the same thing. This is like a man laying down his life. You see, this is like Yahshua, or this is like Yahshua laying down his life, and this is like Yahshua sitting on his throne in glory. It was covered with gold. The sun would hit it, and it would be bright. You could, at the noonday sun, they said the sun would reflect off of it, and it would be so bright you couldn't look at it. Like Moses, when he walked down from the mountain down here, and he had seen just the hind parts. He had just seen the hind parts of Yahweh, but because he had done that, when he came down, he was so bright, he had to put a veil over his face. It's all showing forth. Well, the thing of it is, a lot of people can't see your brightness because they can't get past the flesh. You see, I can see your brightness because I can see beyond the flesh. You see, but people out here, we've got a veil on right now. This is our veil, you see. And once this veil is taken off, you're going to be bright, just like Yahshua, the Messiah. Because up here, when he transfigured, wasn't he bright to these people up here? You see, read. And there's no hope. That's the hope. That's the glory. That is what we're after down here. This isn't just to come down here and go through an academic understanding of your creator. Because there's been people that have come down here and they had an academic understanding of the creator. But it was just academic. It didn't get in them. They didn't take it to heart. There's got to be a change. Got to be a change. Get rid of this old carnal nature, this old carnal way of looking at things and looking at things from a spiritual from a spiritual standpoint, and understanding what Yahweh is trying to teach you. You see, we take the physical, 
We take the physical things in this creation. Joel gets up here and gets into, gets into scientific things and, and stuff that blows my mind. You understand? Other people get up here and work with all different types of things. You understand? And when we get up here and you take and you present that, we're not up here just to understand the academic. The ac we're trying to uh, take that academic and understand the spiritual principles that's behind it. And by understanding the sp spiritual principles behind it, that is giving you eternal life. You see, getting beyond the flesh, being circumcised. Okay, read. If any man defile the temple of Elohim, him shall Elohim destroy. For the temple of Elohim is holy, which temple ye are. See, that temple, when you have that Holy Spirit in you, you see, that temple is holy. Now, I'm not talking about this flesh. Okay? I'm not talking about the flesh. I'm talking about... The temple inside that the Holy, your soul, that the Holy Spirit dwells, dwells in. You understand? That is holy. Okay, read. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Well, I'll tell you one thing, and this is a fact. The more I understand, the more I see this teaching more of an idiot I realize I am and the more I, and the more I more understanding I realize I don't have you know it's like I can remember back I can remember and I, I thought I used to I used to think to myself a lot boy I wish I could talk to Dr. Kinley now boy do I have some questions I could ask him now you see because you know something I got more questions now than I had then you see? But I understand a lot more now than I understood then. Then I couldn't formulate an intelligent question if you really want to know the truth about it. You see? Because I didn't even have enough understanding to even come up with an intelligent question. But the more I know that I don't know, the more I know that I know, the more that I know that I don't know, but I'm happy with that because at least I know <laughs> something. <laughs> If you understand what I'm saying. Okay, read. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Elohim. See, the foolishness of this world, it, 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 this, it's, it's fully, this out here is foolishness. It's, it, and, it, and it's not hard to see that nowadays. You understand? And some of you people have been alive for a few years. You understand? Now remember, uh, some of you can possibly remember back in the f 50s, a couple of you maybe, you know, back in the 50s, in the 60s. You see, back in the 50s, they, they were building bomb shelters, mm -hmm. and they were afraid there was going to be a nuclear war. Yeah. You understand? You know, and then the 60s came along, and nobody cared anymore because they were doing all kinds of <laughs> funny stuff. <laughs> you understand? But even the 60s, look at all the, 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 with the protesting of the war, you see, and, 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 and Nixon and, and all this stuff. And we thought, boy, it just can't get any worse. You know, the 50s, we thought it couldn't get any worse. You know, and then the people in the 60s would look back at the 50s and say, boy, I wish we were back there again. You see, and then the 70s come along and it kept getting worse. And the 80s came along and it kept getting worse. And people would say, boy, I wish I could go back to the 60s again. You know, I wish I could go back to the 50s again because then were the good old days. You understand? And the 90s come along and oh my, gee, this is just terrible. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> now you remember, you remember the 90s, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And now here we are and th past the year 2000. You see? And back then we thought it can't get any worse. But look, hasn't it? From an economic standpoint, it's worse. You see? From a spiritual standpoint, it's worse. And from a, and from a political standpoint, well, don't even, we don't even get there. You see? And when you think it can't get worse, it do. <laughs> It's going to get worse. But that's the physical. You see? And you know something? Let it get worse. You know why? Because I know Yahweh is going to take care of me. 
He's going to feed me from a spiritual standpoint. I keeps feeding me from it. I keep getting more and more understanding. You understanding? You understand? And and see more of Yahweh's plan and purpose. And the more I see of Yahweh's plan and purpose, the more I don't care about what's going on out there. You see, because he's gonna, he's. I've got food. I've got shelter. You see, he. Heck, I got. Uh, I got social security. <laughs> you know. You know. Don't know how long, much longer I'll have that, but. Yeah. But you understand what I mean. He's taking care of me. Everything is fine. I don't have, to, from a physical standpoint, I really, really, truly, I'm not rich. I don't have a lot of money. Don't have, but I'm being taken care of. I'm being taken care of. Now then, why is he doing that? So that I could spend my thoughts, and I can spend my cares, and I can, and I can put my worry into spiritual things. And my worry is, is that I won't be worthy of Yahweh's love and affection that He has given me and this knowledge and understanding that He has given me. That's my fear. That's what I worry about. You understand? Is that. The rest of it, the physical, He'll take care of. You understand? And tell you the truth, He's going to take care of the spiritual too because I don't know how. I've proven that. Okay. Read. Right. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Elohim. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, Yahweh knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man boast to men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul... You see? Now here. Read that again. Start up at uh, two, 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 19, please. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Elohim. Right. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, you know. And now, now that's that's from a spiritual standpoint too, you see, because there's people that sitting in these classes that think they know, they think they think they know more than even Dr. Kinley, because what they have done, they have taken this teaching that Dr. Kinley gave us. Mm -hmm. Now he said he had a vision and a revelation. Okay, now when I first came into class and I heard that one, I went, oh boy, another one. Because there's others that have claimed to have visions, all right? And I studied some of their works before I came into class, and you could find, and even in my ignorant state and condition, I could see that something was amiss. You understand? So when I heard that Dr. Kinley had a vision and a revelation, I went, oh boy, not another one. And that's really what I thought. I'm not. I'm serious, you see. But they did say one thing, that Dr. Kinley said, "Make me prove it to your satisfaction." Now I never heard a preacher in my life ever say that. Make me prove it. All the other ones I'd ever heard is says, "Believe me, brother, I've been sent by God." You see. But I sat and I watched and I seen, and you know something. The more I saw, and the more Yahweh showed me, the tighter this whole thing became. This thing, this teaching is so tight, this teaching is so right, this teaching is so infallible that can't do nothing. I can't do nothing with it. You understand? And if I if I read something or if if, if if Yahweh once in a while will allow my mind just to have a little bit of a doubt about something, all I got to do is just start looking at what I know and what I understand, and it takes that doubt right away. It just completely eliminates it. Because I can look and see how this whole thing goes line upon line, you see. Here a little, there a little. This whole thing is so tight. It is death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit. You see, all the way down through. You understand? Just the basic... If you just understand the basic things of death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You understand? And you get back here and you see. And Dr. Kinley said that if you understand this exodus, this migration here, you understand Yahweh's plan and purpose. Just those simple things. And you know something? It's just those simple things that I look at and see and go, 
it's right. Mm -hmm. It's right and it's tight. So, yes, he did have a vision, but there are people now that are so smart. There's people now that think they're so wise that what they're saying is, is that we're going beyond what Dr. Kinley taught. We're going beyond that. We're progressing from what Dr. Kinley taught. Well, they think they're wise. They think they're smart. But it's all foolishness to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You understand? And as a matter of fact, they're so smart and they're so wise that they tell you, well, you don't need that little law and the prophets anymore. You don't need that Bible anymore. The transcripts for Dr. Kinley preached, you don't need them. You see? Well, what does a dictator do? He burns the books. Doesn't want you to get an education. I swear, I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking crazy, but I think that the politicians are destroying the educational system to keep people ignorant so they can rule them. You know? Don't need the books. If you've got enough money, then you can buy your education. You understand? But, uh, but us poor folk? You understand? I tell you, it's crazy out here. But it's trying to show forth a spiritual principle. You see, they don't want you to have the law and the prophets. They don't want you to have that Bible. Now one of the things I know a lot of the Catholics, that's one religion I never, really, uh, never practiced or really got into, but a lot of the Catholics used to tell me that they were not encouraged to read the Bible. That they were told that the priest would read the Bible and interpret it for them. Mm -hmm. That they didn't need to do that. You see, keep the people ignorant and you can rule them. Mm -hmm. You see, we don't want ignorant people down here. You see, we don't want you to be church down here. We don't want you to come here and listen to what's being said and go, hallelujah brother, that was good, and walk out of here and not think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then come back, you see, and think you're being spiritual and think you're being righteous because you're coming to class and you're listening to what's going on. No, you've got to, you've got to, take, the, you've got to take that cloven hoof and you've got to chew that cud. You see, in other words, and, and if you don't, you're not going to get the nutrients out of what's being taught. This is wholesome food. This is, this is true soul food down here. This is food for your soul. And the only way that you can get the nutrients out of it is if you work it or you chew it. You understand? All of this is trying to teach you something. All, all Yahweh's plan and purpose, it was all, it's, you know, I mean, when you, when you take and you look at why they couldn't eat certain animals, you understand, and you, and you, and you come down here and you see how that's trying to teach you something about Yahweh's plan and purpose, to me, that's amazing. To me, that's absolutely just mind-blowing that you could take something simple like that and that's teaching you something spiritual and trying to teach you principles for your eternal life. I mean, to me, that's just... But then, I'm, I, but then uh, I guess I'm just kind of on fire for this teaching. Yes. I guess I just... Uh, uh, I have no place to go. I can't imagine me walking out that door where would I go? There's no place to go. Absolutely no. I, I, there's this, I. Read, please. 20. And again, Yahweh knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. He knows the thoughts of the wise. He knows the thoughts of the unwise. Mm -hmm. He knows your thoughts. Mm -hmm. He knows my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't like my thoughts, but he knows them. You understand? See, he knows all our thoughts. We can't hide from him. You understand? Read. Therefore, let no man boast in men, for all things are yours. See, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. In other words, I don't care who your dean is. I don't care who's the head of your school. I don't care who your teachers are. All I care about is Yahshua. If Yahshua be in this school, in your school, that's all you need. 
You understand? That's all we need. I'm just, I'm like you. I'm just along for the ride. I'm just here to learn. I'm here to learn as much as I can, just like you. We're in the same ark. We're in the same boat. As a matter of fact, we're all family. You see? The family of Yahshua. You understand? We're, we look like Him. We act like Him. We talk like Him. We are Him. You understand? It's, we are a family. And I'm just another person on this ride, the same as you are another person on this ride, and we're all here together to hold each other's arms up, to support each other, to help each other, you see? Not to backbite, not to be bitter, not to cause any, you know. We're here to help each other. That's what we're here for. Read. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. See, everything. Can you imagine that? Do you, do you understand what our inheritance is? It's all ours. You know, not the creation, not the world. You understand? That I don't. I don't even. It, name me one thing in the physical creation that doesn't decay. Even radiation. Even at, eventually, they say some of it may take millions of years, but it all decays. You see. Everything decays. So why would I want anything from the physical? Why would I want, you know, it's all going to decay. You understand? The only thing that doesn't decay is Yahweh in Yahshua. You understand? And we are going to be in Yahshua and we're going back to the Father. And He is taking us back and He's going to be proud of it. We are His offspring, you see. Be fruitful and multiply. That's what he told Adam and Eve. You see, read. And ye are the Messiahs, and the Messiah is Yahweh. Yes. And so therefore, he told Adam, be fruitful and multiply. That was the first thing he told him. And so what? That's what he's doing. He's being fruitful, and he's multiplying, and we are his offspring. You understand? And uh, I don't know. I am, I am stupid because I'm excited. I'm stupid you see, because I really believe, I am so stupid, I believe this teaching. That's how stupid I am. You understand? And you know something? I'm glad. Because if I wasn't stupid, then I would probably be vain and proud and think I really was something. You understand? So I'm glad to be stupid. And I'm glad that Yahweh is smiling upon me and smiling upon you, you understand, on all of us, to bring us into this great teaching because this, if you, if you come down to these, these classrooms and you learn this vision and revelation that Yahweh, Yahshua, gave Dr. Kinley and then Dr. Kinley is that angel in the last times that has come and showed this vision to us, you see, if you can't be excited about that, then, then, then you're dead. You know, you're just dead. So I hope I I hope uh, I hope somebody got something out of it. I'm tr what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to get you to understand. You see that there's hope. You've just got to look at the hope. You've got to look at the spiritual things. There, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. There is no hope in the physical. It's going to decay. It's going to go down. And just like I said, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it all keeps going. And you know something? If it keeps going, it's even, it's even going to get worse. That's why I think that Yahweh cannot let this thing go on much longer because, because I just, well, I never thought it happened. Back in the 60s, I didn't think it could get any worse. <laughs> so, thanks, guys. Oh. Thank you, Chuck. Well, that concludes our lecture for tonight. We'd like to thank, we would like to thank everyone for coming out. We hold classes every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
and every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please rise to be dismissed with the doxology. Taken from the last two verses of Jude, now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Through the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say in unison. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.